change one thing in your life, what would it be? You never know who's listening. I just feel like I have what's left of Walter's old life. For that, you should be grateful. Forces we don't understand, cosmic forces. Consideration has been received. The deal is done, I thank you, sir. It started as a nightmare that evolved into a short story. From there, it changed into the final film you see today. The original short story was called The Dark Wish. Like the film, it follows the story of Jeff Stokes. The main element that Jeff is unfulfilled and makes a wish to change his life serves both the short story and the screenplay. However, there are notable differences between the two. Originally, Jeff was a struggling actor lamenting that his photo resumes are collecting dust, but that he is making a stellar career for himself as a nighttime security guard. That's fine for a short story, but not very visual on film. So Jeff became a painter in the movie, unhappy at having to illustrate graphic novels instead of having his work displayed in art galleries. This gave me the chance to visually show his artwork, and we can feel his agony later when he discovers his paintings buried underneath old boxes in his basement. Now, in both the short story and the film, both Jeffs share the same tragic character flaw. They are selfish and desperately want their own children, not ones inherited from another relationship. This makes for a potentially unsympathetic protagonist. Since the short story is told by Jeff in the first person, it's easier to create empathy as you experience the full scope of his thoughts and feelings. Not so easy on film. First of all, the storytelling perspective shifts from Jeff's mind to that of an outside viewer, an observer. Jeff is there to be judged by the viewer with all his faults exposed, but many of his thoughts unexpressed. This is where Paul Clemens' extraordinary talent as an actor comes through. He takes on the task of communicating Jeff's true inner decency while most of his actions seem selfish. Please forgive me. I got greedy, Michelle. I, I let it all slip away. Willingly. You see, you're right. It, it is about me. It's always been about me and I'm I'm tired of, of seeing everyone else suffer for it. For all the changes made to turn a 10-page story into a 102-page screenplay, there is one scene that survives intact almost word for word when Jeff tells his wife that he needs to visit his mother. I think I'll go see my mother this morning. Talking to her always helps. I knew I should have immediately withdrawn from the kitchen, but I couldn't take my eyes off her. Michelle closed her eyes as if in pain, then her eyelids fluttered briefly. Take, Take an, an umbrella. umbrella. It's flooring earlier. They say it's going to rain this afternoon. No, I don't plan on being outside very long. Well, at least put on your heavy top coat. You know how cold it can be on that hill when the wind's blowing. What hill? The entire cemetery's on a hill. <sighs> Are you all right? Do you want me to drive? I'll call my mother to come over. This is a pivotal moment for Jeff's character in both the short story and the film. He now knows that everything is horribly wrong and it's only going to get worse. Consider this your last warning, you son of a bitch. And nobody gives a damn. Shut your goddamn mouth! <laughs> Consummated, the deal cannot be rescinded. This is horribly, horribly wrong. Where are my insurance agent? I hide my paintings in the basement. Nothing else in the world matters, just you! When she died, my brother died too. It starts to unravel, it never goes back the same way. Mom, it's a rock. You see a rock. I see a gift of love. Your dreams! Your dreams! What about mine? I'm going to set things right. And that's all that counts. It's all we ever really have. You won't like what you find! I know! 
I know! This isn't the life I wished for. That makes two of us.